Hi again. This is How Listening Works, part two. And we're going to pick up on what we did last time. Um, talk a little bit about tasks. And here's the basic idea. You can't hit a target if there isn't one. Many textbooks don't really have tasks. They just have comprehension questions. And something we'll go into a little bit today, more, more deeply when we're doing um, reading in a few weeks. Um, comprehension questions often don't really test what they say they're testing. Okay, a um, couple rules with tasks. Students should always know the task before they listen. Okay, um, and to give you an example of that, I'm going to show you a, um, a TV commercial for a soft drink, a, a juice. Um, Mountain Dew, I think it's called, uh, or it is called. Um, and... Watch the video, and then you're going to get some questions. This is called, you think you're pretty sharp, don't you? You may not be as sharp as you think. Sharp here means smart. Okay, here are the questions. Question number one, how many, one of the characters uh, was dressed like a police officer. He had a badge. How many points were on the badge? Choices, four, eight, six, Sendai. And the answer, six. Question two, who was taller? The purple clay figure, clay means Nendo. The purple clay figure, the white clay figure, the yellow clay figure, your boss. And the answer is the white clay figure. There was no purple and we don't know how tall your boss is. Okay, who nods first? Nod means this action. Um, okay, the white clay figure, yellow clay figure, neither they both nod at the same time. The answer, they both nod at the same time. Was the time on the watch, the time on the watch, accurate? Yes, there was no watch. We have no way of knowing. Or yes, but only on the West Coast. And the correct answer is, there was no watch. Now, probably you missed all or most of those because you didn't know that's what you were watching for. You were just watching this weird little thing of the uh, video of these clay figures dancing and you didn't know why you were listening. Students should always know the task before they listen. Okay? Um, so they know what they're listening for. And if, as a teacher, this is really, really important because if they get it wrong, if the students get to make a mistake, um, but if they didn't know the task, you don't know if they, um, if they missed it because they didn't understand it. They missed it because they understood but forgot. I mean, for example, the how many uh, points on the badge – you saw the badge. If you had known that that was the question, you could have easily figured it out, but you didn't know. Or maybe they were focusing on something else. You didn't think to count how many points. Um, and tasks usually happen in real time. So we use the expression kiss. Keep it short 
and simple. Usually, they're not writing full sentences. Usually, they're writing a word, checking a box, circling a picture, something that keeps it short so they can do it as they listen. Okay, the power of tasks. Um, do you like math, mathematics? Uh, I find a lot of the, the I find a lot of students don't, um, and that's cool. That's cool. Um, I actually don't like math, but I wrote this because I thought because um, numbers are important, and can I mean our students need practice, but can I do something that would make math interesting? Because if I say, for example. First of all, I've got to check. Um, how do you say the math symbols? How do you say um, kaku? Plus, right? So this is 3 plus 7. Okay? Um, minus is minus in English. Um, what's. Oh, I'm sorry. The, Plus is tas, right? What's kaku? Times. Times, just like it's okay, no time, times. And waru is divided by. Okay? Like if I if I say, so what's three plus seven? The answer is boring. I mean that too easy. Too easy. What I'm gonna do, this is called fast math. Listen. Try to write, you know, write down the problem and then try to find the answer before the recording. Okay? Give it a shot. Page 11, listening task 2, fast math. Listen, write the numbers. How fast can you figure out the answers? Try to write the answers before you hear them. Number 1. How much is 389 plus 56? How much is 389 plus 56? The answer, 445. 445. Number two. How much is 1,877 plus 3,460? How much is 1,877 plus 3,460? The answer, 5,337. 5,337. Number three. How much is 4,852 plus 2,911? How much is 4,852? Plus 2,911. The answer, 7,763. 7,763. Okay, one last one. Number four. How much is 128 times 3? How much is 128 times 3? The answer, 384. 
Okay, you get the idea. Just by adding that musical scale, we made it more interesting for the student because they're not just doing the math. They're competing. Can I find the answer faster than the recording? And they're not competing with each other. Because I think as teachers, we need to be very careful about competition in something like English. Competition is great for sports. But in something like English, if it's a competition, the best students get the answer right all the time. And we don't want that. We want the weaker students to win sometimes. And so if you're competing against yourself, you have that chance. Okay. Um, we need task variety. Many textbooks have the same kinds of questions over and over again, and that's not a good thing. Task variety avoids habituation. Habituation is just when you when you always get the same thing and you get bored with it. Okay? And another idea that's very important. We don't listen to words. We listen to meaning. We don't listen to words. We listen to meaning. And to show you what I mean, um, on the... On this page, the, the page with all the food, at the very bottom it says dictation. Dictation is when the teacher says something, usually the teacher, and the students write it. I'm going to, I'm going to do this, this is very short. I'm going to do a one word dictation. And I'm going to do it in Japanese. But I'd like you to write in Romaji. Right in Roman letters, okay? So I'm going to dictate one word of Japanese. I'd like you to write it in Romaji, okay? And here's the dictation. Sumasen. Sumasen. Okay, did you write it? What did you write? I'm guessing many people wrote sumimasen, right? Did I say sumimasen? No, I actually said simase. I left out the, the su, u, m, and I left out the final sound. But you didn't hear, so I said simase. But you didn't hear simase, you heard my meaning, because simase is not a word. Ah, uh, no. Sumimasen is, so you heard the meaning behind what I was saying. Okay. Couple more concepts. Um, top down versus bottom up. This is a, this is a very important um, concept to understand um, how listening works, how meaning works. Basically, top-down just means we're, we're basing our understanding on general knowledge and life experience, okay? So let's say you go abroad on a vacation or something, you, okay? The language that you hear at a bank is different than what you're going to hear at a restaurant is different than what you're going to hear um, talking to your friends, right? That's life knowledge, life experience, and our knowledge of situational routines. That's the situational routines means like the, the bank, the coffee shop, etc. Okay? That's top-down processing. It's overall meaning. Bottom-up processing is taking the parts Okay? Mostly we mean vocabulary, grammar, and sounds. Okay? This is a little bit tricky. You might want to go back and re rewind the, the video to, um, to watch it again. Basically, think of it this way. Imagine there's a brick wall. Okay? If you are sitting on top of the wall, you get a good general view. 
Yeah, you don't see the specifics. You don't see the little stuff, but you see it overall. That's like top-down processing. You get a good general view. If you're at the bottom, I don't know if this is showing up on the video. There's a Sherlock Holmes character here. Looking at every brick, you see all the specifics. You see all the parts, but you can't see the overall wall. And then you get to a brick that's missing, a vocabulary word you don't know, something that you just couldn't catch, and you're kind of stuck. Okay? Now, it's hard to understand this. Um, let me give you an example. What happens um, when you are uh, listening top down? Okay, Japanese education traditionally has been very bottom up. Yeah? We focus on vocabulary, grammar, sentence level stuff. So I'm going to read you something. I think you're going to know 90% of the words. Um, and I'd like you to figure out what's the story. Um, okay. It's about a, a girl named Sally. A woman, actually. Sally tried setting loose a team of gophers. Gophers are small animals uh, from America. They're about this big. They're kind of like squirrels. Squirrels are reese. I don't think we have gophers in Japanese, so I don't think there is a word. Um, uh, the plan backfired when a dog chased them away. Let me say that again. Sally first tried setting loose a team of gophers. The, t the plan backfired when a dog chased them away. To make it easier, here's the sentence, and this is a gopher. Okay? She then entertained a group of teenagers and was delighted when they brought their motorcycles. So, think teenagers with motorcycles, both is okay, right? Unfortunately, she failed to find a peeping Tom listed in the yellow pages. Peeping Tom is somebody who looks in people's windows. Crabgrass might have worked. Crabgrass is a kind of grass, kusa, that you don't want. Crabgrass might have worked, but she didn't have a fan that was strong enough, that was strong enough, sufficiently powerful. The obscene phone calls, Itazaradema, uh, gave her hope until the number was changed. She thought about calling a door-to-door -door salesman, but decided to hang up a clothesline instead. Um, it was the installation of the blinking neon signs, neon lights across the street that did the trick. She eventually framed the ad from the classified section. And you understood most of the words, and I'm guessing nobody has any idea what the story meant. So I'll show you all of the sentences, but here's the basic idea. She, this woman, put a bunch of these little animals in somebody's yard, in their garden. She invited some bikers, some bosazoka. She was looking for a peeping Tom, somebody to look in their windows. She put um, or she tried to put crabgrass seeds, kusano seeds, couldn't, couldn't spin it. Uh, itazara delma. She thought about having a salesman come, but is putting a flashing, blinking neon sign. And it's like, huh? Because you understand the words. If you want more time to read it, stop the video. Okay. The story is called Getting Rid of an Unwanted Neighbor. If you ever have a neighbor who's bad, she, Sally did all these things to try to get her neighbor to move. Okay, now that was bottom-up listening. This is why listening is so difficult for so many students. Um, what we want to do, we don't want to replace bottom-up with top-down. We want to integrate top-down and bottom-up, put it together. Do you know this building? This is um, the Vatican, the, the place in Italy where the Pope lives. Um, 
Specifically, this is uh, St. Peter's Basilica. It's the name of the church. It's, this, is, this is the most important church in, in the Catholic uh, church. Anyway, a few years ago, my wife and I visited Italy. We went to the Vatican and um, we're, we're standing outside and probably look like tourists. We have you know backpacks and cameras and stuff. And uh, this woman came up, and I don't speak any Italian at all, okay? A woman came up and said, as a, with a questioning voice, Capella. And I heard a Capella. And, uh, and which I, I'd heard that. Do you know the word Capella from music, like a cappella? Um, which m music without any instruments, it's just voice, right? And then she said, Capella Sistine. Ah, Capella Sistine which for me meant, like, I understood it because the famous little church, the famous chapel, Rehaido, in the Vatican is the Sistine Chapel, okay? That's where M Michelangelo painted the picture of God and Adam. Um, but here in Capella Sistine, I remembered a cappella, like an a cappella music, means in the chapel. There's no instruments because it's small. It's small. It's music for a small group. So capella means chapel. Sistine must mean Sistine. She was asking if this is the Sistine Chapel, and I said, "No, San Pietro." I said, "No, this is Saint Peter's. It's not the Sistine." And I pointed to the Sistine Chapel. That's integrating top down and bottom up. I took a few words and general meaning and put it together. Now, how do we do that? What are our students good at? Grammar. They know a lot of grammar. Vocabulary. There's been an emphasis. And they have however many years. If you're talking junior high, 12, 13, 14 years, but even little kids, five, six, seven years of life experience. And we can use those parts, grammar, vocabulary, life experience, put them together. And... We do that, by taking the life experience, combine it with grammar and vocabulary, and activate the language that they already know. Activate what they know. So, uh, let's go to this one. We take top-down information, life knowledge, bottom-up information, vocabulary, grammar, phrases that may come up. How do we do that? for warming up. So think about all of the activities that we've done. Um, the last class in this class, the one about the food. We start out by teaching them cooking verbs. Well, that was for the sandwich one, actually. Um, the family tree, what, you know, what family relationships, what, what are the words for family relationships? So mother, father, sister, brother, then we get aunt, uncle, we can go further. Signs, we give them examples of signs that, that are not really um, too clear, maybe. Um, the other food one, the, the Ding Kong pizza one, uh, we just have them group foods. The green square, we talked about the senses, okay? Giving them a warm-up activity that will activate the vocabulary and the life, the grammar and the life knowledge that they know, okay? And warming up activates uh, top-down information, okay, which is life knowledge, and bottom-up information, which includes vocabulary, grammar, and phrases, okay. Um, and before a task, always saying, "What is my task?" Okay. Um, now, sometimes the books are difficult, and I don't want to spend a lot of time on this. But I'm going to give you a four-part thing. If the, if the listening in a book is too difficult, pick and choose. You don't have to choose. You don't have to teach every page in the book. You got to cover all of the language, all of the functions, all of the grammar and stuff. But do it in a different way. Adapt it. Yeah, I've adapted a couple of things. You know, change it. Reject it. Sometimes you want to throw it out. You know your students. The textbook authors don't. And supplement. 
means add new things, modify text. Okay? And think of it as like the, the sound level on your stereo. You can raise and lower things to, to make it more challenging, make it easier. Example, if a listening is difficult, do it in pairs. Students help each other. That makes it easier. If you have some students who are better, okay, write your answer. Try to catch two more pieces of information. You can adjust the level. Okay, I want to do one more activity before we finish uh, today. Um, and when I, when I mentioned last class um, types of listening, I also said enjoyment and imagination. And that's really, really important, okay? It's the affective. Affective means emotional response. Often, um, sh it often shows more understanding than answering a whole page of questions. So I want to tell you, I want to finish today's lesson with a story. This story is called Wait Until the Master Comes. Okay? And it's the kind of story when I was a kid, when I was your age, a little younger than you, um, my friends and I, in the summer, my friends and I would go camping. And we'd be out in the woods and we'd start a fire and sit around the fire telling stories, scary stories. Yeah, and that's the kind of story. Wait until the the master comes. Is you have this? Oops. Listening. Stop. You have this in your handout, so please look at this. And I don't know if this is going to work. I've never done this online before, but like I said, this is the kind of story my friends and I would tell around the campfire. So I can't really build a campfire in this classroom, but I do have a candle. So I'm going to, you have this handout, so you don't need to necessarily be able to see the words on the screen. These words will help you understand the story. So I'm going to hold the candle and let you enjoy the story. Page 65, listening task two. Wait until the master comes. Look at the words and pictures. What do you think the story is about? Listen to the story. One day, an old man went for a walk in the woods. He lost his way, and it began to get dark. So he looked around for a place to spend the night. By and by, door, but no one answered. He looked through the window. No one was there. He tried the door. It was open, so he walked in. By now, So he decided to make a fire. He looked around, but there was no firewood. There were some old wooden boxes, so he broke them up and made a fire. When he had the fire going a while, he lay down and went to sleep in front of the fireplace. He had been sleeping only a few minutes. seemed friendly, the man went back to sleep. When he woke up again, there was a second cat in the room. This cat was bigger than the first one. In fact, it was as big as a wolf. It was looking right at the old man. Soon, it looked at the first 
push that. Shall we do it now? Dreaming. He was very tired, so he dropped back to sleep. When he woke up again, there was a third cat in the room. And this new cat was as big as a tiger. He looked at the old man. The larger cat asked, Shall we do it now? <coughs> no, said the old man. Let us wait until the master comes. Soon another it was even larger than the others. Its eyes glowed and its teeth were sharp as knives. It too asked, Shall we do it now? The others said, No, let us wait until the master comes. So the largest cat sat down in front of the door. After a time, he looked at the old man. The look was sweet. The largest cat whispered to the old man, it's almost time. The master will be here soon. At that, the old man jumped up and ran to the window. He jumped out of the window and ran. He ran as fast as he could. He finally stopped. He thought, at last, I'm safe. <laughs> Did you like this story? Was it scary? You know, this gets really heavy after after a couple of minutes. Um, did you like the story? Was it scary? Those are strange comprehension questions for a textbook, yeah? But actually, with a story like that, was it scary, is a better test of understanding. If I said, how many cats are there? That's low level understanding. Something we, we won't go into today, but there's, there's a scale called Barrett's taxonomy. Taxonomy just means way of organizing information of levels of comprehension. And literal comprehension, under you know, how many cats are there, is the lowest level. Reorganization is putting together a story in a different order. Inference, we talked about inference, listening between the lines. Evaluation, good, bad, true, false. And appreciation, did you enjoy the story? Appreciation is the highest level of comprehension. So I hope you enjoyed the story and, and our little attempt at a virtual campfire. Um, last thoughts on this. Listening is a skill. Developing skill takes practice. If you want to learn how to ride a bicycle, you have to practice. If you want to learn how to play a musical instrument, you have to practice. If you want to learn anything that's a skill, you have to practice, and listening takes practice. Now, to finish this part, um, please go to Flipgrid. Now, what normally would happen is I would want you to do a um, a, a, a mogi jugyo, a micro teaching. Now, but I'm not sure how we can do that um, online. Okay, I have to explain. I'm recording this in the middle of April, okay? And so it's not like I only wear purple. It's like I recorded all, all of these videos to, uh, in one day. Um, I'm not sure what your task is going to be because we're going to get to this sometime probably in June. Um, so please check your email and, for the topic and the task, and we'll decide if we're doing it on um, Flipgrid, if we're doing it on Zoom, some other um, software, whatever, but we'll make it work for you. That's what's important. Okay, again, thank you. Stay healthy.
and goodbye for now. And thank you. Thank you for listening.